there is a massive illusion being created right now for the American people right in front of their eyes, and nobody is seeing it. Nobody is talking about it. And looking back, I remember the psychological operations classes that we had in the military and being bored to tears with some of them. And now I am very glad that I forced myself to pay attention and remember this stuff. When I show you this, it's going to absolutely blow your mind. There are outlets, both on the right and on the left, that are saying things, and they have absolutely no comprehension of the effect of the words that they're saying. Wait until I show you this. You guys are absolutely going to have your jaws hit the floor. It's one of those things that until somebody explains it, nobody's going to see it. You know what it is? Right now, there are too many options. Florida Maki. Florida Maki, wait a minute. Well, there are only two. Yes, we know there are three or four minor parties running, but there are really only two options for president. There is the option that saves America, and there's the option that destroys America. Now, you can say that to somebody, both on the left and on the right, and they will agree with you. You could literally have a crowd of 50% Trump supporters and 50% Kamala supporters and have them out there directly in front of you and speak that into a microphone and they would all cheer at the same time because both groups believe the exact same thing about each of their candidates. It's one of those crazy things that people just don't get. But Florida Maquis, you said there was... Too many choices, too many options. Yes, too many ideas. Now, real quick, we're going to get farther into this and another topic over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. It's Battlefield of the Mind stuff. It's something that when you look at it on its face, you think, well, gosh, the choice is very easy. But for a lot of people, as we lead up toward the election the next six months, the choice is going to get harder and harder, and harder, and harder, until eventually, right around Halloween, people are going to snap. People are going to snap and say, you know what? Forget it. Forget everything that was said. I am just going to go with my heart. I'm going to go with my emotions. And this is one of the topics that we have talked about at length at the Patreon channel, because, to be very truthful here, on YouTube, they don't want you knowing this. It's only one U.S. dollar. Per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. Now, let's get right to it. For a lot of people, the vast majority in my audience for sure, there is a very clear and distinct choice. There is the party that's that's going to lead America back to being great again, and then there's the party that's going to destroy everything America ever was. See, whatever version of that statement that you make, both sides will agree with it. Both sides will completely 100% agree with that statement. But what do you mean there's too many options? You see, there are folks out there who are like, well, I really, really don't like Kamala Harris's uh, take on the border. And I don't like the idea of Medicare for all, but I really don't like Donald Trump's idea when it comes to pulling out of Ukraine, and I really don't like his ideas when it comes to abortion, so I'm just like, ugh. You know, I'm just all these... And you can go right down the list. The economy, Ukraine, China, I mean, the environment. You get, I mean, all of the different ideas. They're going to put people into choice overload. How many of you have seen this meme online? where you have this woman and there's all there's information that's introduced and it's anal- what they call analysis paralysis. And those of you in sales probably know what I'm talking about. This is a great, very simple, but very great way to outline this. The, the company that puts out 24 different flavors of jam will attract more shoppers than the company that only puts out six. But of those shoppers attracted... Only 3% of those 60 will actually pull the trigger. Why? Analysis paralysis. 
there's too many choices. Whereas over here, yes, you'll pull in fewer people, but they will know for sure based on the six different flavors, which one they definitely want, and 30% will buy. How many of you have ever been to one of these new restaurants that tries to be everything to everybody all the time? In this case, it's a pizza place. We have six different crusts, and we have five different sizes, and eight choices of sauce, seven choices of cheese, 22 different toppings, plus an entire array of sandwiches and appetizers. It's just too much. You see, initially when you look at it, you think, wow, this is going to be good. And then you're like, oh, whatever I buy, whatever I buy means I'm not buying 90 other things. And then, of course, you'll always, you'll it's buyer's remorse. You'll be like, oh, you know, yeah, this was good, but man, what if I had this and what if this happens to everybody? Whereas the little Amy's Pizza Place right down the corner, they have their uh, three different sizes and they have three different crusts and two different sauces maybe and eight toppings and two or three, maybe four sandwiches, maybe some chicken wings, breadsticks or breadsticks with cheese. They're going to be a lot more busy, a lot more popular. A lot more return customers. It's a paradox. It's it's something that's going to affect a lot of people. And it's going to lead to something else that we talk about at the Florida Maki Patreon channel. It is something called the normalcy bias. That means that even when things are burning down around you and everything is falling apart, people have a tendency to ignore all of those things, and just say, well, this is normal. This is fine. This is okay. Normalcy bias, the idea that if a situation was truly dangerous, if massive crimes are being committed or something very dangerous happening, in plain sight, someone would intervene and stop them. Now, that, my humble opinion, is exactly what happened in Butler, Pennsylvania to the Secret Service. Some have made this analysis and that analysis and everything else. What this all boils down to is that this one kid was able to get away with this this one time. I think when everybody saw the kid and they knew the kid was there and he climbed up these pipes onto the side of the building and up onto the roof, that people kicked into their normalcy bias mode. Oh, wait a minute. Well, this, this must be some kind of a test, or maybe he's just getting a better view of this. He can't possibly be, you know, literally observing it. It's a, it's a form of decision bias. See, the, a lot of people ask, why didn't the, the, uh, the sniper teams that were on the other roof, why didn't they fire sooner? Because they didn't want to be accused of irrational escalation. What if it had been just a kid with some with scope up there just wanting to get a look at the president. See, so looking all, all the way across the other side, like, well, clearly nobody over on the other side over there would have let a kid crawl onto the roof with a gun, so I don't think I'm seeing what I'm seeing. And that's all it took. That's all it took. Now, the next level on this is when people finally do realize oh crap, it's all burning down, $33 trillion in debt. Um, things are getting worse and worse. Inflation's going up. And people start to react like normal people will. People in the government will go, okay, hold on. We need to turn down the national temperature. We need to not be reacting emotionally to things. We need to uh, be calm and sedate. And it's exactly the opposite. Believing morality is objective. Authoritarian left, authoritarian right. When you create an ad, like Donald Trump has, who says, that says, Kamala Harris is the most left-wing, liberal government servant that has ever been elected, that's not an insult to liberals. 
is it? It's not an insult to liberals, just like when Kamala Harris and her ilk says that Donald Trump is the farthest to the right that, okay, that's not an insult to people on the right. In fact, when you say stuff like that to the people on the far right, they love hearing that. And to the people on the left, they love hearing that too. Was Donald Trump, when Donald Trump says, Kamala Harris is the farthest to the left that they've ever put up, is he running as a moderate? Is he running as a moderate? No, he's the farthest to the right that the Republicans have ever put out. So it's how does he say that it's the negative for them? To his own party, it wouldn't matter. To his own supporters, it wouldn't matter if she was a moderate. She's not him. She's not him, so they're not going to vote for her. That's, that's the only qualification that he has to get their vote. I'm not Kamala Harris. I'm Donald Trump, and that's why people are going to vote. Same thing with Kamala's diehard supporters. It doesn't matter if Donald Trump was a moderate. They weren't going to vote for Donald Trump because he's a Republican, and some won't vote for him because he's a man. Some won't vote for him because he's an old man. Some won't vote for him because he's an old white man with you know old white man ideas. And there are people that are going to vote for her simply because she's younger and she's a person of color and she's female and all of these other things. But that Donald Trump continues to hammer this, she's the farthest to the left that you can get, isn't a negative to the people that support her. Why he would be trying to preach to his own choir about this, it wouldn't matter it wouldn't matter if he was the most right-leaning Democrat, the most moderate Democrat. It wouldn't matter, would it? So, I mean, and it's the same thing with her. She does the exact same thing. See, to her people, it wouldn't matter if Trump was a moderate. He's a Republican. He's not a woman. He's not for abortions all the way up to the ninth month. He's, you know, everything that they want. So it's a weird thing to see them using this as, this is why you should vote is because she's liberal. That doesn't, to the people in the middle, I mean, to be very honest with you, the people who support Harris and the people who support Trump have something in common. You know what they have in common? They hate everyone in the middle. Unless you're way over here to the right with us, you're really part of the problem. And same thing with her. Unless you're way over here to the left with us, you're part of the problem. That's the new division, and that is the illusion. Remember when I said they're going to make you the problem? They're going to make you the problem. And right now, anybody in the middle is the problem. You either get way over here to the left with us and Kamala, or really you're just, you know, you're just in the way. And the same thing with Trump supporters. Either you are a hardcore right wing, you agree with every single thing Trump says all the time, or you're part of the problem. Now do you see it? Now do you see this? It's absolutely the craziest thing and nobody's calling it out. The, the giant attack on anyone in the middle. The giant attack on anyone in the middle. You've got to be extreme. And that's why I used this pizza place analogy. You have to be extreme. There's a lot of people that'll look at a, a, a huge menu like this and they will freak out and say, you know what? I don't even want pizza anymore. I'm not even hungry for pizza anymore. Let's go get burgers. I thought I was hungry for pizza and man, I had my mouth all set for it, but God, look at all those crusts and sauces and toppings and choice. I mean, just, it's too much. It's too much. So anyway, quick deep dive into, into this is the basis of all psychological operations is studying and understanding how the mind works. And I'll be completely honest with you, this issue with the Secret Service, since 19, was Kennedy was 63, I think it was 63, 
So, so 37 in 61 years, 61 years, people have taken, I guess not including Bobby Kennedy, but um, taken shots at three presidents, Kennedy, Reagan, Trump. Only one succeeded. Now think of every single person in 61 years that has ever been under Secret Service protection. Every president, during and for the rest of their life. Every vice president, during and for the rest of their life. Their spouses, members of the court, members of Congress, all of the people that live under Secret Service protection every single day, day after day. And the only three, only three in the last 61 years in a country that hands out guns like it does free candy is actually pretty amazing, to be very truthful. And in one of the cases, the, the shooter wasn't taken out. Hinkley. Hinkley wasn't taken out. The guy who got Kennedy was, and the guy who attempted on Trump were taken out, but not, not Hinckley. He just went to prison. So it's actually, it's actually a pretty amazing record if you think about it. It's a pretty stunningly incredible record of success. A lot of people don't realize how many people. Melania Trump, all of Trump's kids, all of George Bush seniors and juniors kids they all have lived under secret service protection for every single day day after day and there are countries that have arrest warrants out for george bush that are people that are actively seeking him so i know you want to take this woman to task and um Make it be all about her fault because she's been in charge for the last couple of years. It reminds me a little bit of the issue with the Fitzgerald. The remember they sank the Fitzgerald and the McCain. How the Navy wanted you to believe that the uh, events with the Fitzgerald and the McCain back in 2017, the two ships they got ran into, lost 17 servicemen. That it was a system. uh, Let's see. Let me get this right. Navy-wide systemic failure of training that that led to these two incidents. We never saw any more incidents. We didn't see ships being grounded. We didn't see, you know, um, in the Navy and Marine Corps, any other evidence of any failure of training anywhere. Those two events, and that was it. And then all of a sudden, everything was magically fixed. Nobody, you know, I did a whole series, hundreds of videos on the lies about the uh, USS Fitzgerald and the USS McCain and the collisions and their causes and the bogus idea that it was some massive systemic, the the right-wing radio, this was back when when Trump first came into office, it's the Obama Navy, it's the Obama Navy, it was the Obama Navy, that's all they were talking about as if somehow Navy officers and Marine Corps officers, depending on who is president, aren't trained properly or don't do their jobs properly. It's absolutely insane. So anyway, I will leave it there. Um, And like I said, look, she has to be accountable real quick. But let's put things in perspective here. The the, The hundreds of thousands of opportunities, you know, every single year with all of the people everywhere under secret service protection all the time 24 7 365 and in 61 years three attempts one success and i mean given the amount of people i think it's actually you know pretty incredible record for the secret service as a whole 
if there was a failure of training, if there was a failure of um, planning or even execution, I don't know that you can lay this on her. I really don't think you can lay it on her. That would be like when the McCain and the Fitzgerald got hit in Asia, that would be trying to lay it on Trump. Or truly even trying to lay it on Obama. Like he would have anything to do with the training standards in the U.S. Navy. You know, it would have nothing to do with it. Being the, you know, commander-in-chief during wartime doesn't give you uh, the ability to go down to the granular level and uh, teach or influence how the military instructs its... uh, it's sailors. It's just insane. So anyway, God bless. Thank you everyone who's joined us over at Patreon. Very, very much appreciate it. A dollar a month, fully refundable. Love to have you over there. We're going to be doing a deep, deep dive on a brand new topic, by the way. Um, I did a poll yesterday. Simple question. Is personal financial sovereignty the ultimate form of morality? Meaning the idea of making enough money to keep yourself free. Is that the ultimate form of morality, meaning that if you would decide, you know what, I morally wouldn't do this or morally wouldn't do that, and that would then lead you to give up some personal sovereignty, either to a person when you married them or get tossed in jail or just hand it all over to the government, isn't truly personal morality about being self-sovereign so that all of your choices, good or bad, are are your own. So we're going to do a deep dive on that um, and ask some hard questions. Real quick, I'll lay it out for you here real fast. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to, to the government of any other, John Adams. How many people agree with that? I'm sure a lot of people shaking their heads, or, or nodding their heads, pardon me. They're nodding their heads up and down. Yes, I agree with that. Moral and religious people. Okay, but do you also agree with the statement in The Patriot from the Benjamin Martin character's son when Benjamin Martin started recruiting a bunch of very non-savory, non-moral, non-religious people to fight the war for liberty, to fight against the British? His son confronted him when he observed these men doing some very immoral things, some very non-Christian things. He said, Father, these men are not the sort we need. And of course... Our hero, our hero, Benjamin Martin, says they're exactly the sort we need. So which is it? Which is it? Do we make the non-moral choice and hire the non-moral types because they're really good soldiers and they can fight? Because the fight for freedom is the higher morality? Or do we agree with John Adams? That the only people we should be associating with and being around and having anything to do with are the most moral and religious, upstanding, righteous, non-mistake-making people in the world. Who is correct, John Adams or Benjamin Martin? We're going to talk about it at Patreon. Join us. Love to have you. Once again, last time, dollar a month. Fully refundable for 90 days. No questions asked. Hundreds and hundreds of videos. Would love to have you be part of the discussion. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.